how to use the clone feature in Affinity Photo. Create something like that. First thing to do, view and studio and sources. Now the design I'm using there is a gradient design I created earlier. And of course you can use any other kind of sources. It could be type, it could be images, shapes, etc. And I'm using the clone brush. You can find that in the tools. And you of course can use any of the brushes with that as well. Key panel here is the sources. And what it needs, it needs a file to start with. So I've got some files here. I've already opened these files and I need to add them to this panel. It doesn't work if you want to browse for a file, etc. It works on the basis the file is open. So just go down to the bottom and add to the sources. And I'm going to use a couple of files. I'm not going to do, I've got about 12 files open. I'm just going to use a couple of them as an example. And I'm just going to run through them and show you applying the clone brush. What you can do, of course, you can apply the clone brush to the current layer, but you can also create new layers and apply the clone brush to those. So I'm just going to add that one. That's going to be the last one. So you've got three files there. You can delete them if you wish. You can go down to the bottom. There's a delete option as well. And to work with them, what you need to do is double click. Obviously, you can create a completely fresh document. And it's going to be 1,600 by 1,600. Strange the size of those images. It doesn't have to be, but that's what I'm going to go for. But to work with it, you have to go to each of those clone sources and double click and position where you want to go from. I'm going to work with a layer. So select the layer menu and new layer. And you've got a layer there. You always need a layer in Affinity Photo. Doesn't come with one, doesn't default with one. So go to the clone brush. and apply. But you need to go and define your start point. So double click on that, that entry, the top entry, or any of the other entries, of course. And it will display the document, the source document, and just click where you want to define your source. Obviously that big image, that gradient there in the center. And I'm just gonna apply it. So you've got that design there. Now I can go and apply it anywhere in that document. Doesn't have to be in the same position. I can use any other brush, of course, as well. So I could select another brush, but to go and apply that same design, if I want to apply that same design, I have to go back to the sources, double click, and then apply it again. So go to that one and double click. And again, it will show you a preview. And of course, go to the same part of the image there. Now I can position my brush somewhere else and you can see exactly the same design. Now, if you go too far, you go up towards and you'll hit the edge, edge of the document. It doesn't, there's no tiling feature. It won't, doesn't suddenly think, oh, you've reached the edge. Well, I'm going to go to the other side or whatever. It will just stop. And that will create that lovely line, which you probably don't want. You could, of course, it can create some very abstract designs by using that line. But I'm going to avoid that line if I can help it. Again, define the origin point by double clicking and then just selecting where you want to start. And you can do that with all of the other sources. So you can go to the second one or the third one. Just double click and position your that little pointer say, and work from that. Now, if I continue with that brush, so I can go there and I can double click. But if I can just continue, it will still just continue with that new brush and it will still be using the origin point as before. You want to do double click and then define your origin point again and now apply it. And it looks very similar to the brush. 
very subtle difference. And of course, you can vary the brush in thousands of different ways. And of course, you don't have to use that brush. You could use maybe one of the splash brushes. And there's lots of other brushes, of course, that come with Fendi Photo. And you can import brushes from various ABR files, etc. And you can vary the size. You can vary other settings. And again, you can go back to the Sources panel, go to the entry there, and double click and select. And then just apply it again. And of course, what you can do, you can apply this brush multiple times. Just keep going to them. Keep every time you go, double click, and then go back. And now just apply it. Also, what you can do in between, once you've applied it a couple of times, go up to layer and new layer. Again, double click, put the origin point correctly. Go back to sources, double click again, select the origin point, apply again, and so on and so on. So you can just fill up the document all with this design. And now you can put them on one layer or two layers or three layers or 10 layers. So you can build up a lot of layers with these designs. And of course you can vary the brush. You don't have to use that brush, you could use other brushes. Just avoid the edges if you can. Sometimes I notice I don't avoid it, so it's always best to just go over it and reapply it to remove them. So you've built up those layers. And what you, of course, with a layer, what you can do, you can always go to the layers panel and blending modes, and then you can apply a blending mode. Maybe lighten, normal, whatever. And also, what you can do, you can click, go down the bottom and click FX. Add 3D. Change the 3D setting. Maybe add a drop shadow or not close. So you've got your design now, it's got a bit of depth to it. And of course, you could duplicate that layer. You can create a new layer and continue to apply some brush strokes. And again, use blending modes for that layer if you wish. Go and change the brush maybe, but always, always make certain you select the source. Double click on the sources and then you've defined the origin point and then you can apply it onto that new layer. So you can build up very complex design by using this approach. And of course, once you've done that, once you've created this design, now you could, of course, save this design as a file. Use export command or save command, etc., and then maybe use that as a source as well. With for another image, maybe. But you can always like say blending modes. Now I'm just going to go for difference. Click there and apply the brush again. And you can see you can just keep applying and applying creating all kinds of weird and wonderful designs using that. And now, of course, like I say, it's got the blending mode with difference in there. It's a layer, like I say, you can go and then recolor it. You can go apply effects to it, filters. And you can move them around. Of course, it's a layer, so you can reposition the layer. So maybe you don't, you're not happy with the position, you can always move it. You can also, like I say, go and apply various effects. Maybe a blur, a Gaussian blur, filter menu blur and Gaussian blur. Or maybe a deform. Or maybe mirror. Click apply for that. Filters and distort, maybe, and deform. So you can deform the design you've created using that color to create some really weird distorted imagery there. Apply that. And of course you can then run through the blending modes again for the layer. Maybe use Lighten 
don't have to use normal. And of course, you've still got those source designs there and you can double click and you can continue to paint on that layer. Using, of course, in this case, different. It does make it slightly hard when you start getting more and more complex because, of course, it puts a preview on top, but you actually end up really struggling to see the design. Now I'm going to do it slightly different. No sources at all. I've been showing you with one with source, but of course you can use it more like a conventional clone brush. So you can select a different brush. Just go with one of the brushes. And I'm using normal for the brush strokes. You can set the size, etc. You can set an origin point for your clone. Hold down the alter option key and then click to define an origin point. There, I'm just going to go for that very obvious spot there in the center. And then, of course, you can go to a different position on the document and paint with that. Again, go back to it, hold down the alter option key and click again to define the origin point. The key thing is to hold down the alter option key to define that point. So you just want to go, go to the position and hold down the alter option key. And then you can click. Alter option key, click. And so on and so on. So you can build up, obviously near enough, like a, a pattern design from that original source material that's in the, in the gradient. Now, of course, while I've, I've created a document earlier, I could have used that as a source and of course could have then made a more complex design from that. But I'm just using one of the gradients instead. And you can apply it, make very small touches. You don't have to apply and create all of the gradient. Just maybe apply some of it. Or you could, of course, go and change the blending modes for the brush. So the brush could be applied maybe in difference or darken. Or maybe use opacity and change that. And of course you could use a different brush, maybe one of the splatter brushes. And of course you could modify the design itself and continue to work. Maybe duplicate the layer and then modify the existing layer. So you can see I'm using now Lighten there for the brush stroke. So you can create very subtle designs. I'm going to put that back to normal now. But you could use opacity as well, reduce that down to say 50%. Again, always hold down the alter option key and define that origin point. You can build up quite a complex design using this, but you can also, of course, create a new layer. Don't have to apply it just to the same layer. So you can go to layer and new layer. And now what you do, you have to go down to, along to the side there, right over the far side, and make some current layer and ones below. Otherwise it just won't see it because you're on a new layer now. So you want to obviously apply the clone, but you want to use obviously what's visible below it. And again, use exactly the same approach. Hold down the alter option key and click to define the origin point. And now you can apply it. Now if I go to the layers panel, you can see there, that's all I've created so far. That's that single layer. Again, click for the origin point, holding down the alter option key. And to find another one, you can see now you've got two of those entries there. Again, alter option key and click to define the origin point. Apply again. And you can do it obviously very small, very subtle. And of course, you could use any brush. You don't have to use the same brush I'm using here. And you can create many different sizes. And these are all on a layer. But they're using obviously the underlying layer as a source.
And you can go to that layer, of course, click on that, and you can then move it around. It's just a layer, it's a standard layer. Reposition it. You don't have to keep it in the same position as before. You can maybe duplicate the layer. You can merge it visible, merge visible. But you can also do a lot more. You can rasterize, do whatever you want to do. But it's a layer that you can apply maybe effects to it. You can go and add maybe a drop shadow or 3D or some color effects. Up to you. Personally, it doesn't look brilliant, but you can do it and you can add a bevel and all those sort of things. I wanted to show you that you can apply a 3D effect to it. And of course, what you can do, because it's a layer, you can go and add adjustment layers. You can recolor the design, maybe apply a black and white adjustment layer to it. Which can be then changed at any point, or maybe one of the filters, the live filter layers. But you can also go to the filters menu. You can then go to, say, like distort and deform. And you could, of course, use linear constraint similarity, or I'm using rigid in this case, but you can distort the design in all kinds of ways. Add some pins, just distort, distort the design. Now you can distort it too far, actually it ends up looking a bit coarse in places. I have to say that you may be best to avoid a massive distortion of that. But you can create some very abstract designs and of course you can always add some blurring to smooth it down a little bit later. Also just by simple subtle changes there and apply. And of course you could continue to modify that, you could apply additional deforms to that if you wish. And of course, what you can do, you can hold down the Alt or Option key and duplicate the layer. So you can create multiple copies of that, fill it with this weird and wonderful distorted design, all created via that clone brush, a very simple, basic clone brush. You can create a very complex design in seconds. Just using a combination of that and layers, as well as some filters. And of course, you can resize the layer. And of course, you could still continue to use the clone, maybe with those designs, if you wish. Maybe flatten the image and use that as a source as well. And of course, once you've finished, you can go to Layer and Merge. But the whole thing is the clone brush. It's the key thing. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always any new tutorials about Affinity Photo, Photoshop, Illustrator, and many others. Please add some comments, always appreciated, and a dislike or like. Thank you much.